So this is the document. Everything's in there. I'll refer to it. I won't go through it page by page. And it's all there. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know anything more. Don't go read a textbook or anything. Just look at that document and listen to what I point out as being critical today and then ask questions at the end. Okay? So John challenged us all this morning to do something like scary or put yourself on the edge or something like that. So I thought when he was saying that, I should challenge myself today and uh, I'm going to piss you all off. <laughs> so take these damn things out of your pocket and turn them off. While you're turning them off, ask yourself, how do you feel? Are you anxious? <laughs> turn the freaking thing off. And it's not because I want you to respect me because I could care less. You, know, you don't have to show me any respect. I have to earn your respect. But the bottom line is, turn them off and ask yourself, how does it feel? You know, it's 30 minutes, for God's sake. And then ask yourself, how would a teenager feel if you said you have to turn this off at 6 o'clock? Ask yourself. Put yourself in the kid's position, because these have to be turned off. We're fighting a freaking uphill battle against technology with our children, trust me. And it has a huge impact on their health and wellness, and with an athlete, it has even more of an impact. So that's my challenge. I hope I, hope I pissed you off. Okay. So we believe, we believe, we don't know, that sleep forms the foundation of post-exercise recovery and regeneration. It is a passive state of recovery that, quite frankly, we ignore. And the ultimate sport that ignores sleep, NHL hockey. Trust me on that one. So it's really important to understand the importance of sleep. Now normally, you know, if I had a lot of time, I'd start asking questions in the audience. But ask yourselves this, if sleep is important to you, what is it about sleep? Ask that question. Why is sleep important to me? Like, do you care? Does it make a difference? What does it affect in your life? And then ask yourself about the athletes you work with that you might wonder, geez, this kid might not get enough sleep, or their sleep is crappy or whatever, or they can't sleep when they're traveling, and they're up wandering the halls at 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And you ask yourself, how would that affect the kid's performance the next day on the ice or whatever they're for, okay? And you need to know, because you're the experts, you are going to be the experts, that there's three things that are important. Don't forget these three things. Leave the room today only knowing this and I'm a happy guy. It's the amount of sleep, the quality of the sleep the person gets, and the phase, the timing of their sleep. That's it. That's all you need to know. Three things. Okay? We know from other research that is extensive in, 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 uh, in medical science, not so much in sports science, that sleep affects energy balance, big factor in appetite and weight control. So when you're dealing with athletes where you're concerned about um, energy balance, weight gain, you need to look at sleep as a possible barrier to achieving goals. So you can manipulate diet all you want, you can manipulate training all you want, but if you don't look at recovery in the form of sleep, not other forms of recovery, like cold water immersion, et cetera, et cetera, but sleep, just the sleep state, you're going to miss a major factor that could be affecting the athlete's ability to lose or gain weight, and you're gonna see a story about that. Adequate sleep, we believe, makes the athlete resistant to overtraining. Because of course the goal of the coach is to overtrain or overreach the athlete so they can improve them. And what we want to do is have them well recovered at a high frequency, depending on the periodization of their training, with the, the, the intensity of the training, so that the coach can keep doing what they need to do to get the best performance out of the athlete. We definitely know that there's a great relationship between illness and athletes. So upper, re recurrent upper respiratory tract infections are the most common sign of early overtraining. And then it, we, we believe it will improve recovery from injury. So these are key things. So we came up with a model, 
and the model is based on the work that I did uh, with the Calgary Police Service, just looking at shift work in police officers and health and human performance in a high stress occupation. And we did that work over 10 years. And the key thing is that we look at the ability of the athlete to be resilient to the stressors in the environment, one of which is training, and their health and wellness. So as a, as a physician, of course, we're, and working with sports physicians, we care about the health of the athlete. Do they have asthma? Do they have some kind of chronic illness? And are they still competing? What can we do to bolster their ability to continue to train with a chronic illness like asthma, let's say? But the sleep factor is that it forms the foundation of their ability to manage their health in general. And of course, health is a function of nutrition and hydration and training factors. And then of course, the life factors that feed into basically act as barriers to looking after themselves. But without good solid sleep in the right phase at the right amount, we're gonna struggle. Okay, so it forms a foundation. On the resilient side, we wanna train them hard. We want them to be healthy so that we can train them hard. And they have to be able to cope. And we know that coping thresholds are reduced when we sleep deprived human beings. We also know that cognitively they're not as alert and attentive to the tasks that they have to perform. So concentration and focus are affected by alterations in sleep. Okay? So that's the model we use to develop our research program. Okay? We know that sleep parameters change over the lifespan, which is probably of great importance to you folks, and I think it's been articulated very well within the context of the long-term athlete development format. So it's right in your language and it's there and it's really reliable and useful information. But we need to get the information out to the coaches, to the parents, the parents most of all, okay? And then embed it in the culture of how we raise healthy, active kids and hopefully athletes over time. 